Have you ever received a rare drop like an Arax or Leg Piece, an Orbit Talos, or a Frozen Core at the Arc Lace, or and thought to yourself, I have to kill this boss for an unknown amount of time more to make that serious money? Well, I have, and in this video I'm going to cover why I dislike untradeable PVM drops, so whenever you're ready, grab your cup of tea, sit back, relax, and enjoy. You may or may not have seen my poll where I ask what your opinion is on untradeable boss drops. The reason I made this poll was to find out how many people liked or disliked untradeable drops, and the results were somewhat surprising. Out of 16,000 votes, 64 of the players prefer instant profit or boss drops that can be sold as soon as you get them. Great examples of this are Next Drops, Elite Dungeons, and Carapac. 21% of players prefer untradeable boss drops or the journey to crafting an entire item before being able to sell it and profit big time. Examples include, but are not limited to, Araxor, the Arglacer, and Telos. And 15% of players had no preference. Now I'm going to assume that the majority of those players that voted for the untradeable boss drops are Iron Man players, but I could be wrong. Please don't take that as a fact, that's just what I'm assuming right now. If we exclude the people that had no preference, about 3 in 4 people said they preferred instant profit, myself included. Now a recent example that partially led to me making this video was the Arglacer boss. I've seen many players that experienced the downsides of untradeable boss drops, as they either had too many Nylas and no frozen core, a frozen core and no Nylas and hundreds of KC, or perhaps a few cores and too little Nylas, whatever the case may be, it doesn't matter, point being you're dry on some kind of drop and it's uneven. I've personally killed around 460 Arglacers as of recording this video and I almost burnt myself out doing it. As all I needed to make about 1.5-ish billion GP was a frozen core of Leng. Now I say dry because I'm not entirely sure what the drop rates are, but I believe after killing about 25 hours or more of the Arglacer, I would have at least liked to see a frozen core because I already have 18 Nylas, which is about enough, or almost enough, for two T95 weapons. Now, I know my kill count isn't necessarily high, and I've seen people with no core at 1000 KC, but me not being able to craft a T95 weapon isn't the reason I'm making this video. The main reason is that I'd like to share my thoughts on the pros and cons of tradable and untradable drops, and why I personally dislike untradable drops. But first, a word from today's sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by Hero Wars. Scan the QR code to get started. Hero Wars is a free-to-play Play online action RPG that evolves around collecting, improving, and using heroes to compete with other players. From the get-go, you start with a 13-chapter long campaign. Each of these chapters has more than 10 missions with their own story and heroes to collect. There are over 50 completely different heroes with unique and interesting skills to find and collect so that you can carefully construct your own dream team and use them against challenging bosses. Now while the campaign missions will get you started, there's actually a lot more game modes once you reach the different level tiers, being Arena, Airship, Outland, Guild, Tower, and Grand Arena. Each of these modes are different and have their own advantages and rewards. You can summon Titans, explore dungeons, download artifacts, fight off other players, and team up with guild members to take down special bosses. Hero Wars is a really popular game, has an active community, and has over 100 million downloads with high average ratings on both Google Play and the App Store. Store. If this game sounds like your cup of tea, go ahead and scan the QR code on screen or download the game from the link in the description below as you'll receive a special starter bonus including one secret hero, 62 emeralds and 30,000 gold. Whenever I do get a rare drop from a boss I know I can sell, the feeling of getting said drop is one of the better feelings when playing RuneScape. What? <laughs> and it doubled! Oh and it doubled! God. And it doubled! <laughs> <laughs> While getting a drop that isn't tradable feels good, it never quite feels the same. Perhaps you can relate. The reason it doesn't feel the same is because you know that currently, as of this moment, that drop has no actual value. This is of course not entirely true as it does have value, but since you can't sell the item, it doesn't have value until you can get the other items to craft it into an item that does have value and can be sold to other players. The worst part about these untradeable items is that it turns a fun experience into a grinded out experience. Not always, but sometimes. As you're trying to chase that GP gain to progress your account. It is a system that incentivizes you to do more of a single bit of content simply to make your time worthwhile. Now you might say, well it does that too if the drop is tradable. Every player wants to make GP, and yes, that is correct, but it doesn't actually force you 
to keep doing the content. Yes, obviously the game can't force you to play more, and that is your call to make at the end of the day, but it can try and keep you killing the same boss over and over, therefore increasing play retention, something I believe Jangex has really been pushing for recently. I mean, what other reason could they have to extend the Battle of the Monolith for 5 weeks? I personally believe that the feeling of having to do a boss because you already have a part of a rare item ruins the bossing experience, at least in some shape or form. It creates the sunk cost fallacy, where you've already spent time and GP and supplies on the boss. Now you have a part of an item that is very expensive, you might as well keep going, right? Even if you don't actually feel like doing the boss anymore. Because if you stop, you might have had fun for a while, but you've lost a ton of money, you still need that GP to progress your account, and that item is sitting in your bank and you know it's worth something. An even worse feeling is the fear of missing out. This is something I personally felt when the Archelacer boss was released, after getting enough remnants and Dark Nihilus to craft a tier 95 melee weapon, costing around 1.8 billion GP at the time. Except I couldn't because I didn't have a core drop. Every day that went by I was losing money as the tier 95 weapons were depreciating in value, making me feel like I should spend more time on the boss. This felt terrible and I started doing the Arc Glacier more than I actually wanted, although to be honest it still took me over a week to get like 400 KC, which is I think a few hours a day, but compared to the usual average time I usually play RuneScape per day, this was definitely a little bit more. It is worth noting I really like the first 250 kill count or so and climbing to 500% in Rage, this is an excellent boss, this video should not take away from that. I saw this exact same problem with players that received a core drop early on but simply weren't getting any Nihilas due to RNG. They felt like they got really lucky because they have this orb drop which they can use to craft a T95 weapon, but not really as they couldn't sell it yet. You might say, well just grind it out, but what if that player doesn't have great gear? and doesn't want to do the boss for another 500, perhaps 1000 kills. With unknown drop rates and RNG you just don't know how long it will take. If you're not an endgame PVM or your kills per hour will be slower and it will take even longer to obtain. Now while I don't think a T95 weapon should be handed to you just like that, untradeable drops do not encourage healthier gameplay whatsoever. Remember that the average MMO player doesn't play more than 2 hours a day, and from my poll a long time ago, it seems that more than half of my viewers, aka you guys, play around 0 to 3 hours a day. So chances are you do not hardcore grind this game. If I wanted to craft a weapon from scratch, I would go ahead and play Iron Man mode, except I'm not an Iron Man account, I'm a main account. Why am I receiving the same experience Iron Man accounts are getting for the Arc or almost the same with the Raxor and Telos? Except I can actually go out and buy the weapons, but you know, the experience from, you know, actually getting the weapons is the same. And why is it so different? At Araxor you can trade the full leg, but you can't trade the hilts or leg pieces. At Telos you can sell the dormant items, but you can't sell the orbs separately. At the Shadow Reef and Carapac you do get pieces of a weapon, but you can sell them separately. Why is it so inconsistent? I understand it's a different team working on a different boss, but I never really understood why we moved away from the whole weapon drops to untradeable parts, then back to tradable parts, then back to untradable. Maybe it's because of variation within different bosses. Now I'm aware that some of the previously mentioned bosses do have great common loot without the rares, but since PVM is so expensive, this may sometimes not make up for it. But what if times change, you know? Look at the Ambassador, where common loot is garbage, to be honest. The tradable crossbow pieces definitely make up for it, because, well, imagine having to make a full crossbow before being able to sell it. That would require you to do a lot more elite dungeon runs and wouldn't be very nice. Now it isn't all negative of course, I absolutely do see the appeal in going through the grind and having that feeling of accomplishment of having made your own weapons. Don't think I forgot about you guys sharing your thoughts in the post, but I really do think Iron Man mode is the place for people that want to grind out their own gear and feel like they're doing the game by themselves. Now we also do still have instant profit drops at the Archelacer being the new gold book, but I wouldn't say that changes the feeling for people getting an orb and then going dry or nylas. Another counter argument would be that it reduces the amount of items that go into the game per week, therefore increasing the profitability for those who do make it through the grind and finish creating an untradeable weapon into a tradable weapon like a leg, a raxor, a telos weapon and so on. But since the average player doesn't play that much and apparently a large portion of players voting on the poll did like instant profit, I'd like to list some ideas that I think could have been better. Now you don't have to grab your pitchforks because Jagex won't change anything about any boss in the game 
or in the future because of this video, I just like sharing ideas. I personally don't feel like having a big, super rare single item drop is the way to go, even if the commons from the boss are good enough money. Tradable weapon parts are the best way of implementing new weapons and gear into the game. If these parts are swappable at an NPC for different parts of the weapon for a cost like with the Inquisitor's Staff, it would be even better. If you want to keep the boss profitable, what you could do is introduce a weapon that is used on an existing weapon and once upgraded to a higher tier, let's say tier 97, the item becomes untradable permanently, kind of like activating ability codex. This would 100% keep prices high, as once the item is used, it's taken out of the game and it cannot be sold ever again. Now instead of using parts, you could take it one step further, in my opinion this is the best way of introducing new items, which would be fragments or weapon parts. Much like the Magister where the drop is really common, relatively speaking, so there's less chances of having a dry streak and this keeps you motivated when killing the boss. The best system would be creating a new weapon, which requires let's say a thousand fragments, much like scraps from items when using loot share or the Magister. Each kill this boss would guarantee you one fragment, giving you at least some certainty. Rare drops at the boss could include 10, 20, 50 or more fragments, allowing you to more consistently get part of the weapon, therefore removing the grindy aspect and giving you some certainty and making the GP per hour more consistent. To keep it interesting for high level players, you could add in a rage system where you would get more fragments the higher your streak is, much like with Dark Nihilus currently at the Archelaisor. I think this system would be more appealing to the average Joe, but hey, I could be entirely wrong as well. That's what the comments are for, so let me know what you think down below as we've come to the end of this video. If you enjoyed the video and found it interesting, leave a like down below and maybe even consider subscribing, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.